Hello again, this is Preheat. Welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. So today we're going to be looking over Fire Mage in The War Within. Fire Mage is looking awesome in The War Within, and I'm having a lot of fun playing it, but I will say that it's a lot different than live, and I want to explain to you those differences and what you need to know in order to play Frostfire and Sunfury, uh, and also what I'm kind of thinking. Now keep in mind this is beta, so obviously a lot of this will probably change in the future. A lot of it is just feely craft, uh, but I have been doing a lot of keys as Frostfire and a lot of the raid encounters as Frostfire and Sunfury. And I think I have a pretty good idea of how these talents work, which ones are working currently, which ones don't, and how the synergy works with Frostfire and Sunfury. So I'd say in general, Sunfury seems to be a lot better for like a raid setting. So if you're fighting like a single boss or you're looking to do more boss damage, I feel like it's uh, very easy compared to Frostfire and it does really, really well, especially with movement. But I will say that Frostfury has some insane benefits that we're going to talk about. Specifically when it comes to like burst AoE, I think it is going to be much better for Mythic Plus setting. Uh, it's probably going to be absolutely spectacular there just due to the barrier talent, but there are other reasons too why Frostfire actually does have a bit of an edge. But I will say it's a bit harder to play too, and the talent choices may not have you as excited as Sunfury. So just to give you like a general idea of the synergy with the talents, I think you're probably going to play Unleashed Inferno UI as Sunfury. I think you're probably going to play Frostfire with SKB, but SKB is actually not as bad as it is on live. Uh, and we'll talk about why that is in just a little bit. But um, in general, it's probably a bit easier to start with Sunfury. So that's what we're going to open with. We're going to talk about how to play Sunfury. I think this build will be exceptional in any sort of content you do. But I think that once you start doing Mythic Plus a little bit more, you probably want to start learning Frostfire, even though it might be a little bit more complicated. Uh, because there are some insane benefits you get as a Frostfire Mage. Also, you probably noticed that my setup here is not the same as I have at home. I'm actually traveling, so we're just making do here, but uh, hopefully that isn't too distracting, and uh, we're just going to get right into it. Okay, so I'm going to run you through the rotation before we talk about the talents, just to give you an idea of how this plays, because I think it's really fun and really cool. And um, I am playing Firestarter here, and the reason for that is because I want to set up my procs before I get into Combustion. This is very bursty. With UI, you have like a ton of bursts. So I want to set up my Phoenix Reborn proc on my Phoenix Flame. And I want to also set up my Glorious Incandescence for my Fire Blast to proc the Meteorites as well. This is something I've seen Mages talking about in the Mage Discord. Landfear, for instance, made a post about it. And I think he's absolutely right about this. Um, getting the Glorious Incandescence procs during your combustion is a big deal. And having especially like two of them lined up during the combustion, I think is going to be a huge damage increase. So I'm going to hard cast a Fire Blast here into a Phoenix Flame just to get us started. Um, so as this cast finishes, I am going to queue up the, uh, the Phoenix Flame here, just like so. And now I'm just going to run through my Power Blast, Fire Blast back and forth until I'm out. And then I'm going to Shifting Power here to get those procs back. And we'll use one Fire Blast during that. And then we'll send the Power Blast. And then I'm going to Phoenix Flame, Power Blast. And normally this would be where I'm done setting up. But I get lucky here with a Hyperthermia proc. And I'm not sure if this is correct, but it feels correct to me. I'm going to wait to combust now because of this proc. Um, again, not sure if this is exactly what to do. Uh, I don't know how to handle these procs, to be honest with you, because they're very disruptive. They just kind of happen all over the place. But it's a good thing, right? You're suffering from success whenever this happens. So I'm going to get through this proc first. My Glorious Incandescence is not going to be bothered by this proc. We're totally fine. If anything, this will just help me get my Phoenix Reborn to be even closer. So I'm just going to spam Power Blast here for a moment. And then after that, we're going to set up our Scorch. So here we're going to Scorch into a Fire Blast, and we're going to combust right before the Meteorites start falling. So that way that we can get um, all of those Fire Blast procs and Meteorites in Combustion. So notice here, begin the Scorch, Fire Blast, Combustion. Now the Meteorites are going to fall here, and I'm going to get cooldown reduction on my Fire Blast. Watch the Fire Blast. See how I'm getting procs back? And we just want to spend as much of this as possible during Combustion. And I do want to also spend this Phoenix Reborn procs as well on my Phoenix Flame, just so I can get uh, the, the damage on that. It's just a huge amount of damage, right? Um, but yeah, we're basically just using up all of our procs, trying to set up the Glorious Incandescence. I had a second one just there, so that's properly setting up, right? You should always have two. And then you're always ending your combustion with a Hyperthermia. That's part of Sun Fury, so you can just spam a bunch of Power Blasts after that's done. And then after you're done with your combustion, you're kind of in like a conserve phase, but you still want to spend your procs if you get them because you don't want to overcap. Uh, but obviously, if we can hold anything for the next combustion, or maybe if we get like a TA proc on combustion, it would be great to spend them there. Um, but essentially, as UI, you're trying to not spend uh, really anything if you can avoid it outside of combustion, unless you're setting up for the next combustion. I think that's the right way to go about this. So you'll see me here. I'm just kind of like using whatever spells I have. I'm, I'm trying not to be too aggressive with it, but I also know my shifting power is coming up soon. So I know I can spend my procs if I need to, and I will use these Phoenix Flames back to back there just because it's a ton of damage. You saw that hit for like 600k. Huge amount of damage here. 
Um, and I do get a TA proc, so I need to get through that Fire Blast. And then Shifting Power is coming up here very soon. I have Glorious Incandescence already set up. I'm thinking about, do I want to spend it? Do I want to save it? I go with spend it. So we use it right there. And then we have Shifting Power available. So we're going to go ahead and send the Fire Blast, use Shifting Power. And now I have Combustion available again. And um, I'm not set up for the Glorious Incandescence on this one. I'm not sure if this is a mistake or not, to be honest with you. We'll have to wait to see in Sims if it's a mistake or not. But uh, I guess tell me in the comments if you feel like this works better, saving it always or not saving it. Um, I, we can have a discussion about this. But uh, I'm just going into it just natural. So this would be like a typical combustion, I guess you could say. More like what you do on live. Um, and really the goal is just to get through as many procs as possible. Try to use our Brilliant Power. Try to get our Glorious Incandescence out. Get the reset. And then try to also use the Phoenix Reborn procs so we get huge amounts of Phoenix Flame damage. And I do manage to get two Glorious Incandescence in there, even though I came into it not exactly set up and I end with the Hyperthermia. And that about does it. I mean, it's it's really simple. You spend a lot of your time just spamming spells, but it just does a ton of damage in Combustion. Your Combustion just does an insane amount of damage. So I think you want to conserve as much as possible outside Combustion and just set up those procs, get it ready, and then do as much damage as possible in your Combustion. Okay, so here's my character on the beta, and I have crafted all my gear and added sockets wherever available, and you'll notice that I'm primarily haste and also mastery. Uh, mastery has been changed now. It makes it so that we get the uh, the old value of fervent flickering in the mastery itself, so it's very good talent. Uh, so these are the two that I've been prioritizing, and I am using uh, just like everything from the vendors here. So here is the talent build that I went for the latest raid boss that we did. And uh, most of these talents are pretty typical, although I will say this inflame talent could definitely move down here in the Molten Fury for more execute damage or somewhere else uh, if we need it elsewhere. Um, I will say like Heat Simmer, I, I don't feel like I really need Heat Shimmer. There's so many casts I have, so many instant casts. I feel like having that Scorch as another additional instant cast, it just doesn't really feel like I need that at all. So uh, if I feel like... I do need that. I might pick this one up, but again, not really sure where to put this talent. You'll notice I am not really picking up a lot of these living bomb talents. That's because from what I can tell, uh, it seems like Mark of the Fire Lord is not working properly. If this was actually contributing ignite damage like it should, I would definitely pick this one up. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm probably going to pass on that. I also have Control Destruction, which is just like a really good raid talent. But this talent is very, very bad in Mythic Plus. It doesn't really do too much since it needs time to stack up to full stacks. Uh, but let's talk about the core stuff. So... Yeah, you'll notice here I am playing Firestarter. I have the Scorch Talents. Now, keep in mind, as Sun Fury, I don't have Frost Firebolt, so I don't have, like, a nice, reliable short cast. So that's why I'm playing Scorch instead. And, of course, I'm picking up Down in Flame, but I could swap this out for improved uh, Scorch if I wanted to here. Now, whenever we get down to the Combustion layer, so you can play Improved Combustion. You can probably also play Spontaneous Combustion. I've actually really been enjoying this talent as Frostfire. But uh, I think this just depends on your stats. So like right now on beta, my stat for crit is very, very low. But whenever I use this Flask of Alchemical Chaos, this thing like flips around different buffs that it gives you over time. Uh, this thing does go on crit sometimes. So I feel like I do get some value out of going improved combustion here. But mainly I'm taking this talent for the two second longer combustion. That just seems really, really important as Sun Fury, especially as UI. And then if we go down to the capstone layer, so notice how I'm not picking up Meteor. I'm not picking up the Living Bomb Talents. Uh, I don't think you really want to run Meteor as this, to be honest with you, although you could. Uh, it seems like Meteor is better for Frostfire. But the main thing is I'm picking up UI. So UI is the talent that we've all been dreaming of. We've all been looking for a way out from SKB, and this talent gives us that out. It's very, very strong as Sun Fury, not so much as Frostfire, but this thing is absolutely massive. And I think one of the things that will determine how well you can play this class uh, specialization is going to be how well you play around Unleash Inferno. So if we read the talent, it says while combustion is active, our Fireball, Pyro Blast, Fire Blast, Scorch, and Phoenix Flame deal increased damage and also reduce the cooldown of combustion additionally. So that's on top of Kindling, we get more CDR. This means that Unleash Inferno is insane if we are able to really, really make the full use out of every combustion, get as many uh, instant casts in there as possible, because that's going to give us a lot more cooldown reduction. In fact, if you play around this well, you can get some Fury down to like a one minute cooldown on your combustion, which is really, really awesome. It feels super bursty, and it's a nice departure from the SKB gameplay that we're all accustomed to on live. Um, and then Phoenix Reborn. So the current tier bonus for fire gives us a lot more damage on our Phoenix Flame, and it also makes it so our Phoenix Flame gives us cooldown reduction as well. You'll notice here it says uh, it gives you 1% of the cooldown reduction. That's actually wrong. It gives you 50%, and also gives you the spell damage. So you want to be casting Phoenix Flame a lot. Uh, I will say that Phoenix Flame on beta does not feel as bad on live because it actually does damage now, but there are a lot of talents that we pick up to enable that. So obviously we have From the Ashes. This is just more damage on it. 
And then we also have Phoenix Reborn, which makes this thing into an absolute nuke. And then on top of that, I'm also picking up Ash and Feather. This is just an insane single target talent. I think you're definitely going to want to take this one anytime you're in raid. Uh, and maybe even a Mythic plus two. It just does so much more damage whenever there's only one target available and a ton more Ignite damage as well. I've had Phoenix Flames hit for like over a million damage and my Pyroblasts typically hit if they're instant cast for like around 500k. So it, it can literally double the damage of your Pyroblasts. Um, this introduces some weird new logic to our rotation because it means that we may want to prioritize Phoenix Flame over Pyroblast in some cases, so it's a little bit awkward, um, but not really too sure on the exact implications of this yet until we see Sims. And then you'll notice I'm also playing Hyperthermia, so this talent is actually pretty good. Uh, it is kind of RNG, but uh, since you're getting Hyperthermia already through Sun Fury, this is probably one of the biggest reasons why you want to avoid SKB. And I think it's best to like double down on this talent since we're already getting Hyperthermia through Sun Fury. Just picking this up in the talents, it seems like a huge damage increase and getting these procs feels really, really good because you're super mobile during them as well and everything's critting. It just, it feels really good. All right, let's switch gears and talk about Frostfire a little bit. So, core things I've figured out. Meteor, you want to press that on cooldown. You want to reset your Meteor with Empowered Frost whenever you can. You want to get your Empowered Fire out as much as possible. You want to generate as many Empowered Fires and Empowered Frost as possible. And you want to do all of this while also not wasting any procs. You're going to be pressing Phoenix Flame a lot of the time. You know, sometimes I'll press Fire Blast Phoenix Flame even though I already have a heating up. I just want to get through all those procs so I can get into my combustion with Spontaneous Combustion right away. Um, yeah, a lot of procs, a lot of munching, a lot of instant casts, really not even sure where this is going to end up once Sims tell us what to play. I think it's probably going to do some crazy stuff, but what I'm going to go through in just a moment is like a breakdown of what I think is the best rotation. Again, it's probably not right. This is the beta. It's probably going to change. And also this spec, this specific hero spec is just so weird and different and there's so much it goes against all of like the natural rules of fire that I don't really know where this is going to end up. Uh, by the way, these talents are more of like a raid build for Frostfire. If you want to look at this for raiding, um, what you'll see later whenever I cover the talents is more of a mythic plus oriented build. So here I have like control destruction. I have firefall. I have like the more single target focused stuff, but I am playing spontaneous combustion. Uh, that is notable. And I'm also playing SKB. And so my general idea on Frostfire is I want to prioritize getting my stacks up immediately. And the easiest way to do that is just cast Meteor. If you just do a Frostbolt into, uh, or Frostfire Bolt into a Meteor, you should have instantly max stacks of both the Fire Mastery and the Frost Mastery. And it's better to get the stacks naturally first before using the Frostfire Bolt with Empowered Frostfire Bolt because that will refresh the buff. Um, and this way you actually get two sets of excess fire and frost as opposed to doing it the other way around where it's like you use the frost fire bolt first and then you use the meteor. In that case, you're only going to get one set. So it's always better to try and naturally get it if it's about to fall off and then re-up it with the refresh from your empowered frost fire bolt, your instant cast one. One thing you're going to notice about frost fire is everything is pretty much instant cast. <laughs> and I will be munching a lot of hot streaks because I'm just trying to make sure I prioritize the buffs more so than anything else because I think that's the best way to go about this. Um, so whenever you see my Phoenix Flame turn blue, that means I have excess frost. Whenever you see the orange on the Fire Blast, that means it's excess fire. If it lights up, that means it's the Phoenix Reborn or the Lit Fuse. Um, but I'm just trying to get through my procs here and then get this Meteor out again since our stacks just refresh so I can get through those. And then we're able to use our Combustion. And again, I'm just trying to get the reset. So every time I press Phoenix Flame once it turns that blue color, it's going to give me five seconds off of Meteor. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is just to set up the meteors. I'm really just trying to get out like as many meteors as possible here. And I will be munching, right? Because I'm trying to get those frost fire bolts out, but it's so hard because you've got so much going on here. Your Phoenix flame is like infinite. Um, you're just trying to basically bounce between instant cast to try and guess which one is the best one to press in that moment. Uh, but I definitely think the priority is like, just try to get the excess fire and the excess frost procs out. The reason why this spec is so good in mythic plus is because you get so much more living bomb damage. And also Comet Storm just does a ton of damage. So that is through maxing out your stacks. And then so here we just exit our first combustion. So I am going to try to use those procs. I'm looking at my Meteor because my Meteor is about to be up. I want to use the Meteor first. Right here we're going to cap out, right? So I'm going to use this Meteor. And then now I can use my Frostfire Empowerment. But I also need to get through my Phoenix Flame and my Fire Blast to get to combustion. I just sent it there because I just said, uh, you know what? I'm just going to get into it. I'm too procced up. Sometimes you just get too many procs and you just got to like send it 
even if you waste uh, stacks. But it's always better to try and like spend as much as possible if you can. That is why oftentimes I don't prioritize actually pressing Pyro Blast. A lot of your damage as a spec comes from your Living Bomb, comes from your Meteor, comes from the other procs, the, the stat bonuses. So you're really just trying to rotate between basically pressing instant cast abilities and <laughs> really the only hard cast is, is the hard cast Pyro Blast. Like everything else is pretty much instant cast. You could probably play this spec just like running around the whole time. And it's honestly, it's a lot. It's, a, it's really complicated, but you don't have to make it complicated. You can play it pretty well just doing what I'm doing, which is like prioritizing the Excess Fire and Excess Frost, the Phoenix Reborn, the Lit Fuse, just like prioritize the big procs and try not to munch too many SKB procs along the way. Um, but it feels great because you're so hyper mobile. Anytime you feel like you're down, you got nothing to press, you can either press Combustion, you'll probably have like a SKB so you can get an instant cast Frostfire. Um, your Phoenix Flame basically is always up because every Living Bomb is giving you cooldown reduction on it. It just, it feels nutty. And I don't think this build will do as well in Raid as Sun Fury, but I do think it is just way, way, way too good if there's any AoE available. Because having the on-demand Living Bombs through your uh, excess fire is just crazy. And you'll see here, like, I still, to this point, except for my hard cast Frost Fireball at the start, or accidental hard cast, the only thing I'm hard casting is my SKB Pyro Blast. That's really it. Up until that point right there. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of instant casts. And if you play around the procs a little bit more, I think you can even get more of them. However, I'm not sure if it's better damage to do it that way, to be honest with you. I feel like the damage is actually better if you prioritize just getting through all of the procs you get from your, your hero talents instead. Going over to the Frostfire tree, you'll notice that it's quite a bit of a different story here. There's a lot of uh, variety in the talents. So you'll notice as Frostfire, I'm actually not even running Scorch at all. There's actually a pretty good reason for this because I don't really feel the need to have Scorch. It does very little damage. I'd have to invest at least three points to get it fully online because I'd want Scorch. I'd want Down in Flames. I'd probably want Heat Shimmer as well. It just doesn't feel like it's worth the investment. And since Frostfire, like the cast itself is so fast already, especially since it's for some reason getting the effects of Flame Accelerant, even though it doesn't consume the buff, it just seems more worthwhile to put talents elsewhere instead of picking up Scorch. But I am still picking up a lot of the other talents. There is some crossover here. So uh, we obviously have Phoenix Reborn still. We obviously still have Ash and Feather. Um, I think pretty much with the new tier bonus, we're going to want to pick up the Phoenix Flame talents no matter what. Uh, but I am skipping out on some talents that I'm not really too sure if I should be. So for instance, Master Flame. The reason why I'm picking Master Flame here instead of Wildfire is because this is more of my Mythic Plus oriented build. Um, so I'm trying to prioritize more Ignite damage to get that on the mobs. And there is a lot of time that I spend outside of Combustion. So having Ignite deal more damage during those moments is going to give me a lot more damage. I'm also running Ash and Feather because Mythic Plus does have a considerable amount of single target, especially during Tyrannical bosses. So this talent just seems like really, really good, even if it isn't getting 100% effectiveness. Uh, and then I am running Explosivo. So this is something that I would probably only run in AoE. If I was Radiance Frostfire, I would move this over to Firefall. Just having more Meteors is good. Uh, but Explosivo, having the ability to like choose when to send out my uh, Living Bombs is really, really nice with Combustion. Although I'm not really too sure on the, the actual value of this talent. It seems like the part where it says you get the increased value, the increased chance for it to proc isn't really... It, maybe it's not working correctly, or maybe I'm just feeling that. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, I would definitely move this over to Firefall for rating. Uh, and then I'm playing Spontaneous Combustion. So I actually really love the Spontaneous Combustion gameplay as Frostfire. Big fan of this. And again, I'm running very low crit, so I don't really get much value out of the uh, the mastery conversion here. It, it would mainly be for the two seconds longer on Combustion. But I feel that Spontaneous Combustion for Frostfire is just better, especially for Mythic Plus. It just gives you a lot more on-demand damage, and you can just spin, spin, spin and then press your Combustion and not have to worry about having uh, those stacks going into it. And then at the bottom here, I am playing Sun King's Blessing. So because of Flash Freeze Burn, we have a guaranteed Frostfire Empowerment whenever we proc our Combustion. That could be with TA, it could be with SKB, it could be with pressing Combustion. Regardless of how we get Combustion, if we get it, we get Frostfire Empowerment. And this makes it so that our next Frostfire Bolt is going to give us two really, really important buffs. And uh, those come with other benefits. So it's going to max out our Frost and Fire Mastery. Those are just like a static stat that gives us just Haste and Mastery. So that's really good. But it's also going to give us Excess Fire and Excess Frost. And because this is going to refresh its duration, we actually want to always use this after we've already maxed out our Frost Fire buffs, um, if, if possible, right? So ideally, 
you send like a meteor first so that you can instantly cap out on your frost mastery and your fire mastery since every comet storm is going to give us uh, that effect with isothermic core and then we can immediately turn around and use the empowered frost fireball and get another round of those buffs so excess fire gives us a living bomb that's going to explode and it's going to deal more damage and it's going to give us cooldown reduction on our phoenix flame from all our living bombs and excess frost is going to give us cooldown reduction on meteor which is really really important because meteor does a ton of damage and as this build you actually don't want to press your meteor uh like only in combustion you kind of want to just like press it on cooldown but i do think there's some variation to this uh, i think probably the biggest thing that you're looking for with your meteor cast is if your buff is about to expire you want to use meteor as just like a, a speed run to get your frost stacks up because it will instantly cap out your frost stacks and doing that naturally with meteor and then following up with the frost fire bolt is going to give you double the value because you're going to get extra excess fire excess frost and I am also picking up severe temperatures because the cast time on Frost Fireball is already so fast. It's like too fast. Can't really even make use of it. So I think that this talent is just like better in general. Uh, but I will say that a lot of this is because of the Flame Accelerant interaction here, which I don't think Flame Accelerant should actually work with Frost Fire uh, Bolt like at all. Like I think it should only work with Pyroblast. And in fact, I think that would actually be best for this because you are playing SKB. And plain SKB is normally kind of a slog, but I will say with Flame Accelerant being up for every single Pyroblast hardcast, this actually makes it a lot better since you're always casting Pyroblast with 40% reduced cast time. All right, and that is it for my preliminary Fire Mage guide on the War Within. And I have a lot more content coming soon, a lot of plans for this stuff. I'm also going to be putting out a Devastation Evoker one as well. So if you like this guide, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Wanna ask me how I know? Mm hmm. Oh, maybe I can visit this? Yeah. Nice. I love it. Don't dude. you love Etch, Jack? The three yeah. different versions of Etch this season. So nice, they brought it back. The one in Dawnbreaker, there's one here. It feels like there's one in like every dungeon. Oh, his living bomb. Right. That was his living bomb. <laughs> he beat me to it. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Very cool spell. I see that. Held mine for that one. Mm-hmm. You should rotate those, bro. Yep. One per pack. Easy. You should one shot the dungeon. <laughs> 